Hello sewing people of the internet. In this video I'm just going to give you a quick look at a machine that is new to me, sort of. It's been sitting in my shop for a couple of months now. Um, but uh, I've wanted to try one of these pretty much since I started sewing and oddly treadle machines, a uh, treadle machine is what I wanted to try. Um, treadle machines seem to have a higher value to people on the used marketplace than comparable electric machines. I'll get into more about that maybe in a minute. Uh, so I've just never had the opportunity to buy one because it was always more than I wanted to spend for something that I don't expect to use all that often, but I just thought it would be neat to try. Uh, a friend that I gave the Singer 401A that I had a few months ago, uh, I gave that machine to her because she used to have one. Well, she had this and in return she gave me this. So, um, and I, just yesterday I put the legs and the base together. So I figured I'd turn the camera on and together you and I can find out if this thing sews and, and how I like using it. So, uh, but I wanted to share with you something that I literally just discovered just now. This is a good example of how you can easily overlook something that should be obvious when you're not paying attention, I guess. But uh, I thought this was a Singer Model 66. I have a couple of Singer Model 66s that are, are locked up junk machines that I may or may not eventually get around to making work. And because this is a Sphinx uh, paint scheme, I, I just thought it was a 66. I just assumed that. Uh, didn't pay any attention to the front of the machine over here that should have made this obvious. And it wasn't until I went to pull out the bobbin, to wind a bobbin to try sewing the machine, that I pulled out this class 15 bobbin and I got confused because the Singer 66 should have a class 66 bobbin and class 15 suggests it's a 15. And then I looked at the front and I'm like, oh, this is a class, or a, you know, a Singer model 15. Uh, I guess I didn't know that that was available in a, in the Sphinx paint scheme. I have to keep saying this, I don't know anything about these machines, so, um, you know, other than five minutes of reading on, on Google and stuff. But anyway, so this is a Model 15. I have a 1591 that I don't think I've ever used. And I don't know how much similarity there is between, mechanically, between this Model 15 and the 1591. Uh, this one's definitely earlier. The, the stitch length uh, knob is different. I don't even know if this has reverse or if, it's that, if that's just a length adjustment. But in any event, um, so I just got to track down an extension cord and plug this in and then, oh wait, no, I don't have to do that. Uh, no, it's, I put the belt on yesterday and it seems to be working correctly. So I'm going to thread it and try sewing some stuff with it and just share with you what I think. Because I don't have a lot of time, I didn't try winding a bobbin on this yet. There's no, there's no tire on this winder. And I don't, maybe it doesn't need one because it's a leather belt that it engages with, uh, yeah, it seems like that works. But anyway, uh, I don't have time to mess with that right now. So I just took a bobbin out of another machine that I have that also uses class 15 bobbins. I have a lot of machines that use class 15 bobbins. So I'm just going to use that to test this. If the machine works, then I imagine the bobbin winder probably works fine too. I don't think I've ever threaded a 1591. I, like I said, I have one that I painted a while back, but I don't think I ever used it. Looks like take up spring, maybe. I'm not sure if that's supposed to move. Uh, I wonder if that take up spring is broken. I'm going to bring my other 1591 in here. Yeah, so it looks like there's a spring here that is broken. I'm not sure it's in great shape in this one, so we might not be trying this machine after all. I took the spring out of the other machine. So let's see if... This shaft is different from what was on the other 
or else part of it came out that didn't come out on the other machine. I feel like this should come out. Well, after some unsuccessful Googling and hitting it with a hammer and other stuff, I finally realized that this uh, post unscrews from this piece. So uh, that's how you get that spring out. So now the spring is out. I destroyed the spring, but it was already broken. So, so if you, so now I'll try the spring from the other machine. Okay. Now if I can remember how this goes back together. There's apparently a process to zero out a tensioner. I don't even fully know what that means. Uh, Andy Tube has a series of videos on the Singer 15, uh, I think 1591, but either way, uh, that talks about that. It might be something to check out if you are interested in working on these machines. And again, I have not even looked up how to thread this thing. Uh, I, I actually kind of enjoy just seeing if it's easy for me to figure out. And I may thread it wrong, but if it's wrong but still works, then that's okay with me. I'm just using the needle that was in the machine. All right, let me try to find some appropriate... Well, I guess let's see if it picks up the bobbin thread first. Well, that's a very good sign. All right, let me find some appropriate fabric. I grabbed a scrap of 10.10 ounce waxed canvas. It's probably not an appropriate fabric, but let's just see what this little guy can do. Uh, other than using the treadle to make sure the machine was working yesterday, I've never operated a treadle machine, so. I posted video on Instagram of operating the machine and a couple guys, Backyard CNC and Sir Kelvin 273 both pointed out that uh, I need to start it by hand um, and uh, I think it was Sir Kelvin that, that suggested using two feet on the treadle. You probably can't see my feet in this shot, sorry. But, uh, so you're kind of bicycling with your feet a little bit. Um, maybe it's more like an elliptical, but you get the idea. So anyway, I'm going to try that, but, you know, I don't know what I'm doing, so if you know different, let me know. This is harder than it looks. I'm also uh, moving the machine a little bit. Okay, so we're going backwards now. That explains part of it. It does have reverse, or else I'm reversing the machine. Okay, now we're breaking a needle. Yeah, I think I might have... I had this happen yesterday when I was trying to uh, make the machine go for the first time. Um, where it would... Yeah, I was, I was making the machine go backwards. So, let's see if we can do that better. Made a couple stitches though, so. This is probably not a very good thread choice for that waxed canvas. This is just some regular household thread that came with another old machine. Uh, so the fact that the thread broke is not that surprising to me. All right, so I think this is the longest stitch length. <clears throat>
This is much harder than I thought it was going to be. And this machine may not be adjusted well. There's all kinds of reasons why this might not be working. Oh, well, one reason is the tension is shit. All right. All right, let me get a couple of hand stitches in here to make sure that we're sewing. And then, yeah, the tension's still way, 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 way off. All right. So the tension is not getting any better no matter how much I crank it down. Maybe it's slightly better, but it's not better, better. So let me uh, see if I can figure that out. Okay, the tension seems fine on the bobbin case. That does not feel right. Yeah, that's not screwed in enough. That, I think, is the problem. So I think the, the shaft that I pulled out is not seating far enough into this collar, whatever we want to call it. I don't know where the camera turned off. My stupid camera turns itself off after like 10 minutes. So anyway, I've been messing around with this. Um, I reassembled the tensioner. The shaft that I unscrewed doesn't seem to have been inserted deeply enough. I think that was preventing the tensioner from providing enough tension. We'll see if I was right. Oh, look at that. Stitch is great now. All right, now let me see if I can make it go with the, the treadle. Okay, I broke the thread again, but let me just see if I can get it going. The, the problem I'm having is that the machine is trying to turn backwards. Okay, there we go. I'm, I'm having to hold myself in place because I'm on a chair with wheels. That doesn't work. Apparently when uh, these machines were invented, they weren't planning on people using lightweight office chairs on wheels. So let me try to get another chair here. Okay, I got a chair that doesn't roll. And to give this thread a fighting chance, I just cut a piece of some random cotton apparel fabric. We'll see if that uh, will help. Oops. All right, well, that's the longest I've uh, managed to make it go while trying to actually sew something. And that uh, sews just fine. Couple of, couple of skip stitches. That might be my fault. I was kind of manipulating the fabric more than I should be because I was trying to hang on for dear life. Um, I think I need a heavier, more stable chair, probably something a little bit higher, just to make this a little bit more comfortable to do. But um, the, the amazing thing to me about this, so I don't really need a treadle machine. You know, I live in Florida and occasionally we get hurricanes and might lose power for a couple of days. So. I suppose if I really needed to sew something in those couple of days, having a treadle would be fun, as long as I could still see. If I don't have power, I don't have lights. So I don't have any real need for this, but I mean, this machine, I'm guessing, is from the 1920s. And uh, 
I didn't change the needle, I didn't oil it, I didn't do anything. I have no idea what the history of the machine is in terms of when it was last used by anyone. Uh, this is not a museum piece by any stretch of the imagination. Sorry, I'm pausing because I noticed that the uh, leather belt is shredding itself. And I'm not sure on what. That might be part of the part of the problem. Uh, just getting a lot of residue from the leather here, but in any event, uh, the the point of this video, if there is a point, is that it's pretty neat that a machine of this vintage can still function, even if I'm not great at making it work. That's definitely the biggest drawback I see so far, and it may be something I'm doing, but it's possible to get the machine to run backwards, and you don't want to do that because it can apparently throw the machine out of timing. It's funny because, like, I'm pretty good at sewing, and like just having to watch and make sure that the wheel is turning the right direction and moving my feet in this way, I, I feel like I'm drinking from a fire hose here. I did not expect it to be this challenging um, to uh, do this, but there you go. So I think, yeah, if I were gonna use this thing, I would have to practice quite a bit before I would wanna put it into use on an actual project, but uh, let me show you the stitches. So there's close up of the stitches. Tension's not absolutely perfect, but good enough. So it works. So uh, that's just a quick overview of me using a treadle machine for the first time. Again, your experience may vary. There may be something wrong with this setup that's making it harder to use than it should be. I don't know. Uh, but if this is typical of what it's like to use a treadle machine, then I need some practice and it's harder than I thought it would be. But it is pretty cool. I, there's, I mentioned on Instagram to somebody that uh, when you get this thing going, it's kind of a mesmerizing sound. Let me see if I can get it going without actually trying to say. Yeah. I don't know why this is easier when I'm not sewing something, but... But that's, that's a cool sound to hear, and so uh, I could see that being a very enjoyable way to sew something just for fun, and I'll, I'll probably do an actual project on this just to do it. Again, for some reason, when I see these on the used marketplace, they tend to be hundreds of dollars, whereas I could buy a Singer 1591 electric machine for, you know, sometimes $20, $25, and sometimes more, depending on condition and things like that. Uh, I don't know why people want these more. I suspect it's for display. Uh, I've seen a lot of tables made out of the bases for treadle machines where probably the top and the machine have been thrown away, and that makes me sad. Um, but uh, anyway, if you have one of these, it seems like it'd be a viable option. I, I know a person who upholstered the interior of his hot rod in the like 1970s with a treadle machine. So uh, it's definitely a useful machine. The machine head is no different. Power is coming from you. And I imagine if you get good at it, you could probably have really excellent control uh, with, with using this setup. So. Anyway, what are your thoughts? Do you have one of these? Do you use it? Should you have one? What would you use it for if you did? Comment down below. If you like the video, clicking like always helps. If you're not a subscriber, then please consider subscribing to this channel. You can also check out my second channel where I do a lot of outdoor adventure kind of stuff. It's the Jason Wins. There'll be a video at the end of the video and a link in the description. You can also follow me on Instagram. It's where I revealed this machine. And if you really like what I'm doing here, uh, you know, in addition to clicking like and subscribing, there's some affiliate links you can shop through. 
that always helps out too. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.